It was Memorial Day 2016. I had a group of people at my house for a party and I got a call from my mom that my sister had had a seizure. My mom and sister worked together at the time. She called 911, the ambulance came and took her to the hospital. I was uh, umpiring a baseball game and I had uh, you know, 30 missed calls and just not very normal. I went to the hospital, left the party, and I get there and my sister was sitting in a hospital bed talking to me and I was like, oh, okay, everything's all right. So went back to the room, the doctor come in, said, I think it's probably just migraines. Since she has a history of that, it's probably just a serious migraine. And so again, I was just like, okay, wonderful. It's nothing serious. Went back to the party. Get there and talk to Jessica and she seemed kind of fine at first. And then she uh, was talking a little random here and there. And I was like, you know, kind of what is going on? As I walk in the door, I get a phone call from my dad. He said, Jessica's having a stroke. I turned right around, drove to the hospital as fast as I could, and I get there, and my sister's hysterical crying, and it was that moment that she had to decide, is she gonna take this medicine or not that might save her life or might kill her? And the doctors are like, you're already at the end of the time, you have to decide now. The whole thing was happening so fast. They're calling for the helicopter. They wheeled her out. It was the scariest moment. Hey Jess, we're here. We're right here, Jess. Finally, a doctor comes in from the surgery. We made it through the first night and they said that that was a huge sign that maybe she would live through this. Every 24 hours they said was more and more likely that she might make it. After we got over that, we realized what the ramifications of having a stroke would be. The first time that she got out of the bed and tried to walk, I had to leave because I didn't want my sister to see me cry. Honestly, the next thing that I really like truly remember is when um, a doctor came in and he was like, okay, so we're gonna try and like move. And they swung my legs over to the side of the bed. And I remember thinking, well, this is weird. Why are they helping me swing my legs? And then I went to stand up and I couldn't. And then he asked me to take a step and I couldn't. And that's when I was like, this is bad. I kept telling myself to take a step and I couldn't. Because you think that like you can like trick your mind and like in your body into, you know, like, like this isn't real. This is not real. That's when it just got real. <laughs> I felt so bad for her because she was going through this for no apparent reason. You know, I just, I don't know. It's, I knew we had a long way to go. <laughs> I just remember being like, what do I need to do? Just tell me what it is, like, what is the next step? They're like, you need to start moving and walking. I was like, okay. And that's when I, I felt like I had to switch, switch my brain into gear of like, all right, it's time to work. When the PT guy came in for the first time and told Jessica that she needed to get up and try and walk. And the sooner that she tried, the more likely it would be that her body would start to heal itself. She was like, all right, let's do it. Let's get up. During my recovery in rehab, I didn't necessarily think too much further than the next thing to do. Because there was always someone in there, whether it was a doctor, a nurse, there's always somebody telling you what the next thing is that you need to do. And I found a lot of comfort in that. She would go to her physical therapy and I'd push her around in her wheelchair and she held my little baby. I kind of told myself like, you just gotta get to 75% normal. If you can get to 75%, you're golden, considering everything that's happened. Okay, second rest. 
I knew then, like if we can get through this part, we can really just get through anything. I always knew I was gonna spend the rest of my life with Nick, but I didn't know what it was gonna bring, especially the fact that I threw him in a hospital with me after six months. Just a couple months into it, I knew we were gonna get married. Like I just knew we were. He proposed to me in Target, every girl's favorite place. Are you serious right now? <laughs> oh my God. You couldn't have told me the day that I left rehab, the life that I have now would be what it is in a good way. I'm married, I have two kids, girls. I just never would have expected that life would have turned out this way. But I wouldn't change it. I am thankful to the American Heart Association for raising awareness and letting people know what the signs are, what the symptoms are, because the more knowledge you have, the more power you have to possibly catch something before it is too late. If I've learned anything from the Go Red movement is that I am incredibly lucky. I have met some very inspiring people. Not everybody gets to come back from what I came from. I get to do my life like nothing ever happened. That doesn't happen for everybody.